Hey guys, Final Cut version 11.1 just dropped. Let's take a look at what's new. And as always, I'm gonna start with what I'm most excited about, native adjustment layers, finally. So adjustment layers allow you to apply multiple effects across multiple clips. And for years, a lot of third-party developers have been offering users adjustment layers for free because all they are are empty titles. But in true Final Cut Pro fashion, Final Cut's been a little late to the game adding these natively, and yet they've upgraded the functionality of them. Let me show you what's different about these ones. So surprisingly, this native adjustment layer isn't in the titles and generators sidebar where you might think it would be. They're actually buried here under the edit menu and called adjustment clips but they do have a keyboard shortcut. And this is one I definitely think you're gonna to wanna to commit to memory. It is option A. Everyone say it with me, option, option A. A. So just like any other adjustment layer, you can apply it on top of multiple clips in your timeline and apply color corrections or drag and drop effects to it, or even transform those video clips in unison with the transform tools. But I did promise you these were an improvement. Watch this. If I select a range of clips in my timeline, and then select an effect in my effects browser and hit option A, it drops in one of these adjustment clips over that range with that effect applied. And that adjustment clip even says the name of the effect. Now I can still add other effects to this adjustment clip, but the name will stay the same as the original effect I applied unless I open up the index, find that adjustment clip, and I can rename it. And the other advantage with these particular adjustment layers over third-party ones is Final Cut recognizes them in their own roles. So you can disable all of the adjustment clips at once in the index. And if you export your video as a multi-track QuickTime movie, you can even disable those adjustment layers, which is something you may wanna do for archiving. So I'm sure you can see the advantages of using these native adjustment clips over adjustment layers you may have gotten for free from a third party. Another new upgrade in 11.1 .1 is that we got new title templates in the dynamic titles category. So if you head on over to your titles and generator sidebar, head down to dynamic titles, you'll see there's a lot of new stuff packed in here and they're all totally customizable. So if you're looking at this and the color or font doesn't really appeal to you, that's okay, you can change it. And if you saw my Final Cut Pro tips for content creators video, you remember that I showed you how to take components of these dynamic titles and stack them with magnetic masked video to create really eye-catching intros if you missed that video. I'll link to it down below, but you should definitely dig into these dynamic titles if you haven't, because there's a lot you can do with them. All right, let's move on to another improvement in functionality, which is that we can now move markers in our timeline. In previous versions of Final Cut Pro, wherever you applied that marker could not be moved at all. Now we can drag it around side to side within an individual clip, which is very nice. And you can also now delete those markers by just clicking on them and dragging and poof, they disappear. I love this. And before we move on to what else is new in Final Cut Pro 11.1, .1, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, me. Did you know that I offer self-paced full courses on Final Cut Pro and Apple Motion? My Final Cut Pro introductory course, Final Cut Rockstar, is my best seller. I give you all the media to download so we build a project side by side and I zoom way into the screen so you don't miss anything. And once you've completed Final Cut Rockstar, we're leveling up your skill set with Final Cut Rockstar Next Level. It's a more advanced course for intermediate to advanced Final Cut Pro editors. You may also be interested in my introductory Apple Motion course, Motion Launchpad. If you've been intimidated by Apple Motion, this is the course for you. I start at the very beginning and you will be an Apple Motion user by the end of it. And if you're looking to start or grow your creative agency, you might wanna check out my course, Agency Kickstart. I've owned my production company for 15 years. I cannot believe it. And I've learned a thing or two over that time. So I'm spilling all of my secrets in Agency Kickstart. If you're interested in any of these courses or all of them, head on over to jenjager.com. You can buy them a la carte. You can bundle them together and save. We also offer group rates for schools or companies who want to educate their workforce. We do it all. Head on over to jenjager.com. Thank you to me for sponsoring this video. What's next in Final Cut Pro 11.1 .1 is a new audio filter that was initially announced at the Final Cut Creative Summit in November, but it was for Logic Pro. Now they've brought it to Final Cut Pro. It is called the Quantec Room Simulator. And it's based on some machine that was invented in the 80s. I think it was like German engineering. And basically it does an amazing job of simulating sound in different spaces. So they've taken the idea of that machine and that technology and brought it into a digital filter here in Final Cut Pro. 
So you apply this audio tool, just like any other filter. And if you just hit this icon here, you get this whole new control where you can make your audio sound like it was shot in a different space than it was. They have all these default spaces. Let's take a listen to some of the options. So at the meeting today, I was able to listen to FAU talk about the new things that are going on at the school. So at the meeting today, I was able to listen to FAU talk about the new things that are going on at the school. So at the meeting today, I was able to listen to FAU talk about the new things that are going on at the school. So at the meeting today, I was able to listen to FAU talk about the new things that are going on at the school. And if you're a really advanced sound designer, you can tweak these sliders on your own and create your own custom sounds. It's a really powerful tool. And while we're working with audio filters, here's what else is new in 11.1. We can now rename our audio effects to help us stay organized in our audio inspector. Another upgrade in functionality relates to multicam clips. We can now easily find the exact source media from a particular angle in a multicam clip in our timeline. Just select the section of the clip you want to find the original media for and hit Shift F. It'll highlight for you in your browser that range of your multicam clip. But if you hit Shift F again, it'll reveal that range in your actual raw source media. Even if you opted to hide that original media when you made your multicam clip, which is a newer feature in Final Cut Pro, it'll unhide those source clips and show you that exact range. And then if you needed to, you could replace just that section of your multicam clip with the original media, because there are sometimes circumstances where you want to be able to have that original media in your timeline. For instance, maybe you need to stabilize part of your multicam clip. Maybe somebody bumped your tripod or something, or maybe the light changed very briefly in a multicam clip and you just want to apply a unique color correction to that one section of a multicam. You can now find that source media in your browser and replace that that part of your multicam clip with that original media. This allows you to maintain the great workflow of multicam editing in Final Cut Pro, but give you the flexibility of being able to easily locate that source media. If you wanted to do this for your entire timeline, you may want to take a look at a product called Multicam Flattener from the good people at Automatic Doc. I talked about the Multicam Flattener in this video, so I'll link to that video down below if you're interested. And I'll also link directly to the Multicam Flattener in the App Store if you want to check that out. The last new update in 11.1 .1 is kind of an interesting feature. I don't see it having a ton of use cases, but it might be fun for some of you. We now have Apple's Image Playground inside Final Cut Pro, which as you can see, you can access under what used to be the import button. Now you get this drop down where you have to either select import to bring up the import window or you can select Image Playground. I'm not crazy about its placement here in the UI because I don't think a lot of people are going to be using Image Playground, but everyone needs to import media into Final Cut Pro. Definitely a good reason to commit to memory the shortcut for opening that import window, which is Command I. But let's say we did want to use Image Playground. You just select it here and you can type in a description of the image you want. And if you're trying to generate a person, it's going to ask you to select a reference image from your own photos. And then when you hit done, it automatically drops that new image into your browser. And then you can just treat it like any other clip. Here I use these icons to motion track a kitschy cops and robbers scene. I don't know. It's there. It might be fun to play around with for a little while. I don't think you're going to be reaching for it a ton at this point. Maybe if Image Playground gets built out a little bit more, we'll find more use cases for it in Final Cut Pro. We'll be really glad to have it built in app. In addition to these updates, we also got some bug fixes. I'm just going to throw them on the screen right here. And I really want to know which update is most appealing to you. Like I said, I'm excited about adjustment clips. Final Cut Pro for iPad and Final Cut Camera also got updates today. I'll link to my videos about those two things down below. You guys, thanks for hanging out. Here's some other videos I know you're going to love. I'll see you again.